Hello, good evening to you. Welcome to the Business News here on News 360. My name is Alfred Akonsi. Let's go on to our first story this evening. The Bank of Ghana has officially announced the retirement of its governor, Henry Kofi Wampa, after news broke on Tuesday on his intentions to step down ahead of a scheduled retirement. So what will his early retirement mean for the banking industry and who is likely to take over here is a business desk report. Statement signed by the bank's secretary stated that in view of his long-standing leave days, the governor is taking an early retirement from the bank with effect from April 1, 2016. This comes ahead of his tenure, which falls on August 5, 2016. The central bank governor, since taking over from Park Wissie Misaratha, has struggled to keep the city stable. He was heavily criticized over the failure of decisions such as the forex control measures, as well as the recent developments in the microfinance industry, where millions of cities have been locked up due to alleged poor supervision of the operations. But Dr. Wampa, whose original tenure expires in August this year, has decided to bear out early to enable his successor get ready for the huge task. The announcement comes just weeks after his son-in-law was arrested for drug-related offenses. For now, it is unclear who will take over from him an otherwise automatic opportunity for the first deputy governor, Melissa Na. Speculations are however rife over a soft spot for second deputy governor, Nasiru Ishaku. The development, according to sources, is causing some nervousness among top managers of the bank. There are also speculations the president may appoint an outsider as a compromise choice to head the central bank, a development which will not be alien to the central bank. Meanwhile, a former deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana, Emmanuel Siedu Monte, has defended the decision by Mr. Wampa to retire ahead of his due date in August. According to him, it is well within the governor's right to take his accumulated leave. He, however, wondered why the governor will cite the impending elections as one of the reasons for his early retirement. Honestly, I don't see anything peculiar because... Uh if I read the explanation right, what he said was that he has accumulated leave, right? So he decides to take the leave prior to retirement. There's nothing unusual about that. He could have waited till August and decided to go on retirement, in which case the bank would have paid him money for the leave that he didn't take, or he has a choice to take the leave prior to retirement, which is what he had done. There's nothing unusual about it. I don't know, I'm not in his mind, and I don't know why he's linking his retirement to an election. That, that I don't understand, and I don't, I don't intend to hazard any guess. Away from that, GCB Bank has launched a new card payment system. The GCB Light Pay provides a payment solution which combines a card reader and a smartphone to accept and process payment transactions. GCB Light Pay is an innovation in response to challenges with cash payments. The product uses an EMV certified card reader and a GCB branded payment app on a smartphone to process transactions. The accepted cards include GCB Ready Cash Card, a MasterCard, or a Visa card, making any ATM card to work on Light Pay. The novelty is affordable as it ensures access to transactions data for reconciliation and boosts customers' confidence through real-time receipt notification either by email or SMS. Acting Managing Director of GCB Bank, Samuel Sapon, said GCB Lightspace is intended to facilitate faster service delivery. Unlike the traditional POS devices, which basically the, the POS terminal is heavy and normally sits on a counter, LightPay can be even be carried in the pocket. The convenience it provides is that it can be used in taxis, it can be used in trotters, it can be used in buses, it can be used in small shops, even in Makola, so that or even the, the vendors on the street basically could carry the LightPay because they normally have a phone. All that they need is a reader and basically internet connectivity and they will be able to accept cards. The innovation brings to merchants the benefits of increasing sales, portable and easy to handle, quick resolutions of issues, prevention of theft and clear trace of transactions. It's, it's about time. I mean, the world is moving in the electronic age and um, we need to take advantage of that. If you go outside here, there's a cashless society 
and that's what GCB want to be a forerunner in that arena in transacting business without carrying cash. We are expecting it to catch up with customers very fast. GCB Bank being a pay setter in the banking industry with a wide network of 157 branches and 20 agencies across the country continues to deliver on its promises with a high sense of professionalism and strong desire to deliver. Now, government received in excess of $997 million in crude oil revenue in 2014, according to the Ghana Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative's 2014 report. According to the co-chair of the initiative, Dr. Steve Martel, it is time to engage in a cost-benefit analysis of the mining and oil and gas sectors. Ghana Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative is to enhance good governance in the mining, oil and gas sectors. At the launch of the 2014 Ghana Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative Report and Open Data Dashboard for the mining and oil and gas sectors, the Director of Real Sector Division, Kwabina Okuafari, underscored the need for prudent management of revenue from the mining and oil and gas sectors. Ensure that our natural resource revenue data are widely available to empower the general public to hold both companies and government accountable. The co-chair of the Ghana Extractive Transparency Initiative, Dr. Steve Manteo, said it is crucial for reporting on the extractive industry to go beyond revenues. But what these reports are not telling us is how much is costing us the social cost the environmental costs, the lost livelihoods, how much these costs are, and whether or not it is worth the while in carrying these costs in order to generate these revenues that are being reported. He urged the authorities to do due diligence to avoid costs being carried on to new projects. 2014 reports, um, there were outstanding issues regarding, the, for instance, in the oil and gas sector, if you do not re reference expenditures in the term field, then you could end up as in a situation where costs incurred in the term field uh, or costs incurred in the jubilee field could be brought to the other sector and therefore you are uh, unable to achieve a taxpaying position much earlier on. A member of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament, George Kofi Arthur, is of the view that Ghana Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative should be invited to the Public Accounts Committee to share the experience. Public Accounts will be meeting them to find out the, the, the strategies they used or the committee they put in place to enable them implement all the recommendations uh, which uh, made them hard that award in Peru. I think that is one thing we can learn from them. Now, oil traded near $38 a barrel in New York as uh, the dollar rebounded from a five-month low against the euro. Futures retreated from the day's highs along with the standard of pause 500 index as the U.S. currency rose. As a stronger U.S. currency curbs investor demand for commodities, prices surged as much as 4.1% after a government report showed U.S. refineries lifted operating rates uh, to a high of about a level in January. Let's find out how the commodities uh, markets has been faring uh, so far. And if you look at what's been happening with gold, there's a price change which goes to uh, add more of a disadvantage in the negatives, so about some 2,974 for cocoa. Uh, the same can be said for that uh, also with coffee, 127 closing on the day. And with Cotton, cotton closed the day at 557.66, with crude oil also 39.30 there. So some relative gains as has been seen on the commodities market. On the interbank rate, to find out how the city is faring against some major currencies on the market. Now we look at uh, the dollar, the, it, it will be sold to you at 5 cities 52 uh, pesos there, there. Also, the same can be said for the euro. If you go onto the market, you would have the euro being sold to you at uh, four cities 34 pesos and also be bought at four cities 34 pesos. 
there. So that's how the city is referring on the interbank against some major currencies across the world. But that's it for business.